So we're here at Voter Hacking Village and we're looking at all the different types of electronic voting and how they can be hacked. If you look around here, there are machines from all sorts of different vendors. You have people taking them apart, uh, looking directly at the JTAG of them. You have some people plugged into the network ports, uh, running scans on them. And there's an active network here where you can try to both defend and offensively penetrate the voting network. So yeah. what we're trying to demonstrate for the various agencies is they can they can build a lab environment mm -hmm. where they can build their entire election infrastructure in a lab uh, built in a virtual environment where they can constantly make changes and adjustments okay. um, uh, very quickly, on the fly, very cheaply. What are you hoping will be will come out of all of this? More knowledge. Uh, I, one thing that I, I have been so delighted, today people who were doing a lot of work on Friday came back and have been helping and educating the next generation, saying this is what we did Friday, helping them. So now they are the experts in two days. And that is both delightful and also for people who are looking at this from policy perspective, that is very scary. If some people who have never seen the machines before mm -hmm. are the experts teaching the next people two days mm -hmm. later. Do you think the machines will be hardened because of everything that's happened here? Actually, unfortunately, a lot of the things, uh, all the machines here have been hacked and documented and publicly known vulnerabilities over 10 years ago. Because it's running on a very old Windows, a very old version of Windows CE, okay. which probably has a lot of old Windows vulnerabilities. True. And it has OpenSSL um, 0.9.8G. Before Heartbleed. 2007, before Heartbleed. Yeah. Which is, I mean, now you, have, now you can decrypt information, which is... I mean, that's really easy. Because of the evidence, I don't think a lot of things will be fixed immediately or ever, but hopefully next generation of machines are more responsibly designed, and hopefully policymakers uh, will understand how important it is to, in the intermediate time when the machines are vulnerable, to establish better policies, better physical defense, better procedures to try to mitigate against the vulnerabilities now discovered. But it kind of goes beyond that, not just elections, but lottery commissions, yeah. you know, almost any kind of uh, uh, specialized network. They can even integrate special hardware like these voting booths into uh, into the virtual environment. Remember that people came here, they have never been touching a voting machine. Uh, people who saw eight books and were first one to hack them, they actually didn't even know such thing exists. Uh, we had the two first uh, successful hacks within the two hours from opening the doors. And actually those people were not first ones in the door, so within one and a half hours from when it started, they were already successful and uh, doing the proof of concept. All the five systems we have here, all the five systems are penetrated. Uh, we were here not to show that they can be hacked because all of these machines actually have been hacked before. We were actually in educating and finding if there's new ways. And we have found a lot of new ways, there's a lot of firsts. So do you think our next election will be slightly safer? Slightly is a, a operative word, yes. Okay. <laughs>